What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. Right, Battle of Kerastes, 1596 AD, part two. Ottomans and Christian armies coverage. Let's go. After defeating the Ottoman vanguard during the afternoon of October 22nd of 1596, the Allied Army of the Holy League enjoyed an air of confidence, realizing that, despite being outnumbered two to one, they had a very real chance of defeating the massive Ottoman host that invaded mm. their lands. Even so, the Allied commanders were still as cautious What's as What's Mehmet going to do now? Fearing an ambush, they did not allow their troops to make camp that night. An Italian noble who had fought with the Christian army recounts that night everyone stood where yeah, they I'll do it to be, and because it was very cold on a field without firewood, we suffered endlessly. Mm. During the following morning of October 23rd, the Christian commanders convened a war council. However, notably absent from this meeting was the Prince of Transylvania, Sigismund. That was the um, the mercenary guy, yeah. Bathory. The prince, having set off with his troops before the break of dawn, moved to pursue the defeated Ottoman army and possibly even ambushing the Sultan's main camp. Mm. It seems he may have assumed the Allied army would follow him, though this would not be the case, however, as the Allied commanders had ultimately agreed upon a very different course of action. Deciding that the army would maintain its position at Mesa Kerezdesh, they... Oh, no. I see it happening now. I see it coming. I see it coming. He's going to be left alone. He's going to be taken out, and that's one less problem for the Ottomans to deal with. The, the this guy going ahead by himself is just an absolute idiot. Quickly sent messengers to recall the prince. The reasoning of the Allied commanders was as follows: In addition to its highly defensible terrain. The village of Mezokerezdesh was also located on the only immediate route into Habsburg, Hungary, mm. that could support the massive Ottoman army, which would also only be able to approach from the west, as the mountainous terrain to the north and the swamplands to the south were both impassable for an army. Makes Did the sense. Sultan wish to continue the... I mean, that was why they took up the position for the last episode, we knew that. Offensive. He would be forced to attack the entrenched Christian army on terrain that not only minimized the Ottoman advantage in numbers, but also maximized the Christian advantage in firepower. Okay. If the Sultan chose to withdraw from the area, mm. the Allies would be in a strong position to recapture Eger, which had been their original goal to begin with. With this in mind, the Allies were content in allowing the Ottomans to make the first move and react accordingly. Okay, so they're taking a reactive uh, stance. I understand that, but I definitely think I would have tried to go to the next town uh, closer and stayed there, so I would have been able to react quicker. Uh, but there might be some some reason. I don't know the landscape. I don't know the reason why they didn't do that. You know, a campsite north of Mezokrezdesh was eventually designated for the army, and the two major fords of the Kachi oh. stream were fortified with trenches. At the Ottoman camp. Sultan Mehmed was in a panic, shocked by the defeat of his vanguard. During a hastily assembled war council, two proposals were put forth. The first was suggested Better. by the Sultan himself, who wanted to... Yeah. ...send only the Rumelian army against the Christians. This, however, was strongly opposed by the rest of the council. Mm -hmm. The second proposal which was supported unanimously amongst the Ottoman commanders, put forth that under the leadership of the Sultan, the entire army must move to confront the Christians. I really think they could take them on an open field battle. This video is faced with strong opposition from the rest of the Ottoman leadership. Sultan Mehmed had no choice but to adapt himself to the will of his commanders. Mm -hmm. Just as the army was about to set off, however, Sources mention that the Sultan considered abandoning his army and returning to Constantinople. 
It is said that the Sultan had gone as far as a I think in this situation It's his whole army though I don't think you can do that I don't think you can do that I think that will cause way too many political problems back at home Attempting to transfer the leadership of the army to his Grand Vizier, Ibrahim Pasha However, the Grand Vizier was able to dissuade the Sultan from such mm. rash action I think that was smart Early in the morning of October 24th The Ottoman host I don't think they should attack the, the Christians head on. ...began moving towards Meza Karezdesh, leaving behind a force of around 5,000 to garrison Eger. Later that afternoon, the forward elements of the Sultan's army were spotted by a unit of 300 Transylvanian cavalry guarding the southern ford. The Ottoman vanguard, consisting of approximately 10,000, sent forward around 3,000 Tatar cavalry supported by six cannons, in order to probe the Christian lines for any weaknesses. The Tatars spread out along the stream, attempting to cross in small numbers wherever they could. Okay. Meanwhile, the rest of the Ottoman vanguard assaulted the Christian fortifications, which had been built around the ruined church mm. of Mezakrezdesh. The 300 Transylvanian cavalry who had been guarding the ford were quickly overwhelmed. The Tatar I'd imagine so. at this point had also managed to cross the stream, finding a small fordable area somewhere further to the south of Mezakrezdesh. Mm. In total, approximately 5,000 Ottomans over to test the Christian defenses. These troops Thank now began making their way guys. towards the Christian camp. The Ottoman cavalry's success would prove to be short-lived, however, mm. as the Allied command had agreed to allow several thousand Ottomans to cross, with the intention of cutting off their retreat once they did so. Look at that. Look at that force. Imagine trying to deal with that force, that encampment. Like, I'm okay, thank you. I'm okay, thank you. The Christian trap was first announced with a barrage of devastating mm. cannon fire, which all but stopped the unwitting Ottoman vanguard in its tracks, attempting to return fire with their six cannons. This Is the rest of the army going to follow? It's proved ineffective, however, and it Surely the vanguard starts leaving now to tell him not to come. ...not offer any reprieve from the Christian bombardment. Additionally, as the Sultan had elected not to seek battle that day, these units found themselves unsupported by the rest of the Ottoman army, who had instead started to make camp on the other side of the stream. Oh, that's even worse. That's so much worse. Oh my god, that's so much worse. That's so much worse. He just sent them in to die. Holy... Oh my god! Just, you just wasted, just wasted your vanguard. Seeing that the unit was isolated, Sigismund Bathory now gathered his <coughs> cavalry and charged. And after a brief clash, the Ottoman vanguard was eventually routed, being mm. pursued by the Christians up to the opposite bank. As it was now late in the evening, the Allied commanders chose not to push the attack any further. No. In their rush to escape, the Ottomans had abandoned their six cannons, which were promptly captured by the Transylvanians. I'm looking forward to see what they are like. This it's, concluded the final actions like between the two already. armies on October 24th. In order to further secure their positions, Albert Karai posted 2,000 cavalry at each of the two major fords. As the Ottoman host was so large, its marching formation stretched for miles, with contingents continuing to arrive on the battlefield well into the morning of October 25th. So they're not even getting time to rest. This is so unfortunate. They're a bit of a delay. Those unfortunate enough to arrive later in the night or in the early morning were not given the opportunity to make camp, however, and instead were sent immediately to their battle positions. The Christians awoke on the morning of October 25th to the sight of the Ottoman army, assembled and in battle order. It should be noted, however, that the Sultan still had not yet arrived on the battlefield at this time. Okay, so the Sultan's still not there. 
have they had surely they've got the information of what they're facing against from the soldiers that sort of uh fleed from the vanguard so they're still going to attempt this so I, i'm interested to see how they change up their tactics and what they try to do here oh my chest is dying guys i am looking forward to finding out what happens in part three if it's crazy because this seems absolutely bonkers at around 6 a.m., the Ottomans, taking advantage of their advanced tactical position, mm -hmm. were initially able to drive the Christian Guard units from their fortifications before the rest of the Allied army could assemble. Aiming to secure a bridgehead on the Christian bank, the Ottomans additionally sent four cannons across the stream in order to further fortify their newly gained positions. Right. This is going to bring the, other the Ottoman Christians vanguard out. now began to threaten the assembling Christian army as the outnumbered forward units assigned to guard the crossing were pushed back and forced to give ground. In order to buy more time for the army to assemble, so they didn't even get a chance to assemble. So it seems like there's a big, big uh, mess up by the Christians at the moment. The Allied leaders sent a detachment of 300 cavalry to help stall the Ottoman advance. Additionally, Albert Karai ordered a number of cannons to be brought out from the camp, which began firing upon the densely packed, encroaching Ottoman battle line. The Ottomans returned fire with their four cannons, which was mostly ineffective. Unable to withstand the withering fire of the accurate Christian artillery, and in parallel with the previous day's events, the Ottoman vanguard was once again forced back across the stream. This allowed the Christian army enough time to properly form up in their designated battle positions. That's it. Now they, now that they're actually going against the full force of the Ottoman, they're getting their chance to actually deploy their battle line. So the Ottomans missed their opportunity to sort of take advantage of that, and the Christians made sort of a, a mistake. Which is as follows. The army of Upper Hungary, led by Tiffenbach, stood facing the Mezokeresdesh ford, its left flank anchored by the fortified church. The Transylvanians, led by Prince Sigismund Bathory and Albert Karai, stood facing southwest, their right flank secured by Tiffenbach's units, who were manning the church fortifications, with their left flank secured by I'll a wagon port. Thank you. The northern passage was guarded by the troops of Archduke Maximilian III, who had also left an additional contingent to guard the camp itself. Mm -hmm. Schwarzenberg, along with most of the German infantry, held the ground between the Christian camp and the ruined village. The Christian artillery was placed behind Tiffenbach's troops, overlooking the crossing at Mezokeresdesh. After they were driven back, the Ottoman vanguard again attempted to cross in small groups. It is see? mentioned that the Tatars launched a fierce attack on the northern passage, which was likely motivated by their desire to mm. plunder the Christian camp. Small groups of Tatars also crossed in the same areas further to the south, as the day before. These units also began making their way towards the Christian camp and attempting to circumvent the Transylvanian army opposing okay. them. No, this was a mistake, however, as the Transylvanians, along with those inside the wagon fort, fired upon the Tatar cavalry, inflicting many casualties Ooh. and forcing them to withdraw. Just waste their uh, wasted cavalry units just for potentially plundering the Kish Christian camps. Absolutely pointless. Yeah, I, I, I'm becoming sick watching this stupidity and these tactical maneuvers. Absolutely outrageous. This battle was atrocious. At around 11 a.m., Sultan Mehmed III, along with the final units of the Ottoman army, finally, finally arrived Mehmed on the battlefield and took up their positions. While the Sultan's presence was necessary for the morale of the troops, the army was in practice led by the Grand Vizier, Ibrahim Pasha. The Ottoman artillery was placed in front of the center division, which was held by the Janissaries, who were flanked on either side by the Sultan's household cavalry units from Constantinople and its surrounding areas. The army deployed according to Ottoman tradition ever since the Battle of Mohach, with the Rumelians taking... Such a large force by the Ottomans, or it looks like it to me for some chance. 
it just looks absolutely massive up their position on the army's left wing while the anatolians took up the right wing it seems that the ottoman vanguard with the tatar cavalry were also placed on the right wing and comprised its first line how are they going to get past this fortification though? while we know the positioning of the ottoman units the precise formation they utilized is somewhat unclear right, cheers, thanks, although it is suggested that they may have deployed in the shape of a crescent the battle commenced with an artillery duel. Mm, as they always do. Despite being outgunned, the superior quality of the Christian artillery pieces emerged victorious, inflicting greater losses than their Ottoman counterparts. Realizing this... So that, that goes back to the fact that the Christian's weaponry was uh, of uh, great, wasn't it? The Grand Vizier ordered his left wing forward in an attempt to storm like the Christian the fortifications. This initial attack enjoyed some success as the Ottoman artillery began targeting the engaged Christian right mm. flank. Looking to further press the attack, Ibrahim Pasha sent forward his janissaries and as they emerged from the ford, also began firing into the Christian right flank. The situation became critical for the Christian army as Tiffenbach's troops struggled desperately to keep the surging Ottoman tide. They're going to get reinforcements. Seeing this, Albert Karai Plus. hurried to the aid of his Hungarian allies, bringing with Bulk him the elite blue Bulk uniformed guards of the Transylvanian prince. Schwarzenberg also moved to assist with his own units. Ooh, and with the combined strength of the three of contingents, yeah, right? the Christian allies finally managed to repulse the Ooh, Ottoman no, attack. Nice. Nice. However, as the Ottomans began to retreat back across the ford, two to three thousand mixed Transylvanian infantry and cavalry no, attempted to pursue them, no. but were quickly driven back by the unengaged Ottoman right flank and sustained heavy casualties. I mean, they kind of deserved it. What are you going... What, why do you think it's a good idea to chase after them into the enemy lines? Like, of course you're going to get caught, you absolute fools. This would conclude the last of the fighting that occurred on October 25th, mm. as the Ottoman army withdrew to their camp for the night. The Christian army maintained its battle positions for some time, and after posting additional guards, eventually followed suit. While the Allies had gotten the better of the Ottomans during the previous engagement of October 22nd and 24th, the fighting on the 25th ultimately ended stalemate. in a stalemate, mostly due to the extensive casualties suffered by the Transylvanian troops that had attempted to pursue the Ottomans. Again, what would you expect? Why did you do that? The two opposing armies prepared themselves for the following day, their leaders drafting extensive battle plans late into the night. Both sides understood that the decisive engagement of the most important battle of their lives would soon begin. Mm. I guess that's going to be what happens in the next Thank episode, Thank you so right? much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, click like and Once subscribe. Once again, no footnotes. No footnotes. Um, we'll probably jump straight into part three. I don't know if we're going to jump straight into it right now, but... Um, we're going to jump into it the stream. I, I am busting for a loop. I think I need another 5-10 minute break so I can go to the toilet.